Its very name is a watchword for daring design. This was where the Bauhaus movement found its expression, a school of art that energized a generation of designers who threw out old-fashioned frameworks and ushered in simplicity and mass production. Looking uh, through those invisible walls, through the glass walls, you get an idea of how an open society can be. 100 years on, its dean tells me the school is teaching the designers of tomorrow with an emphasis on the lessons of yesteryear. What remains of the Bauhaus, the legacy which is really important, is that Bauhaus was a school. All design schools all over the world uh, implement the curriculum of the historic Bauhaus. I think that's why the Bauhaus really is in every design decision in the world. From its inception, this school had designs on more than architecture. Furniture was fashioned with mass-produced steel as frames and supports, thereby creating simple streamlined forms that seemed to define a changing world. And now, as the concept enters its second century, Germany is paying tribute to its first with a festival in Berlin, where furniture and architecture share centre stage with the performing arts providing an experience its curator hopes will wow all who see it. A lot of people approach contemporary art with this idea, I don't understand it, you know, I don't know what these people are doing. And I think this festival gives you a possibility to understand processes, how art uh, develops, how it emerges from certain ideas. Some of the exhibits at this festival concentrate on the synergy between man and machine, robotics if you will, an emancipatory form of expression that's helping to bring some parts of Bauhaus out of the shadows. And that's the aim of the entire festival, to shed light on a movement whose essence was to abandon ostentatious, outmoded ideas and embrace the modern world. Dominic Kane, Al Jazeera, Berlin.